have a hair and it's like tickling my boob. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Lynn Van Nooy. And today I want to talk about some paranormal things that my family and I have experienced over my lifetime. I hope you guys enjoy my makeup. <laughs> I thought like spooky theme, what goes with space buns, purple lipstick, obviously. So the first story I want to talk about involves my grandpa. He died when I was six and I wasn't really ever close with him and the reason behind that is because he didn't like my mom. It's kind of weird but basically my mom is the youngest of five and when she was born she was a mistake. She was a oops. I wasn't supposed to get pregnant again type of baby. My grandpa was an alcoholic. He lost his job as a janitor because of his alcoholism. So it was hard for my grandparents, uh, especially having four kids, to sort of get on and uh, be okay. So my grandma found out she was pregnant with my mom and she basically tried every wives tale in the book to get rid of my mom. She would take extremely hot baths, she would fall down the stairs on purpose, things like that. But my mom turned out fine and she was born and basically my grandpa didn't like her because she wasn't supposed to be born. Uh, so she he kind of treated my mom like shit growing up. She didn't really care, she didn't really take it to heart, they just didn't get along. And so when I was born, my grandpa loved me but in a weird way because he resented my mom. He kind of tried to act like he didn't care about me type of thing so he would never call me by name. He would just say, hey you, hey kid, you know, and I don't ever remember this because I mean like I said he died when I was six but According to my mom, that's basically the way he treated me when I was a kid. Like, he showed me lots of love and would play with me and spend time with me and things like that, but he would never address me. Sort of, uh, like, spend time with me without acknowledging that I was there, if that makes any sense. My grandpa passed away when I was six. Like I said, he died from throat cancer. He had lung cancer because he was a smoker and then it eventually spread and gave him throat cancer. He died in the hospital and before he died he gave all of the grandkids a gift. Now I'm like one of like eight grandkids. I don't even know how many grandkids there are. Okay, maybe not eight. But anyway, he gave all of the grandkids a gift. I still have this gift and the gift is really weird. So I'm gonna show you guys this gift. It's covered in dust, but this is what he gave all of the kids. It is this really ornate ceramic or porcelain carousel. And as you can hear, you wind it up and it makes music. And it's like really creepy. Really pretty, but really creepy. So I'm just gonna give you guys like sort of a <laughs> close up look and hopefully it'll stop playing so I can finish my story. So when my grandpa passed away, I think almost all of us had some experience involving him. My one uncle lives all the way in Alberta and the night my grandpa passed away, he passed away at like one or two in the morning or something. Maybe it was even later, like three or four in the morning. And word obviously hadn't traveled back to Alberta. Now, keep in mind, I live in Ontario. We all do. And my one uncle, Al, lives in Alberta with his wife, Brenda. So having my grandpa die in the middle of the night, my uncle Al wouldn't have heard news of my grandpa my grandfather passing. My grandpa passed away and basically my uncle woke up in the middle of the night and saw my grandpa standing at the foot of his bed. Just standing there. There's no way that my grandpa could be there. My, my uncle lives in Alberta and he was in the hospital here in Ontario. And when my uncle Al found out the next morning that my grandpa had passed, it was weird. He told the rest of the family I saw him standing at the foot of my bed like minutes after he had passed. Kind of weird. My grandpa had just kind of stopped in to say, hey, bye. <laughs> but yeah, that's one occurrence. Another occurrence that I experienced personally, now I don't know if any of the other grandkids, my cousins, had ever experienced anything like this. I was quite young when this happened, so I wasn't really, you know, talking about it. 
and now my cousins and I don't speak so we're kind of estranged from the family but anyway my carousel would play randomly all the time up until I was probably about nine I would say and like I said he passed when I was six it would just randomly start playing this creepy music So yeah, the carousel is beautiful and it's ornate and delicate and I always cherished it as a kid, but the fact that it would play like really creepy, somber music at random times was always sort of weird, obviously to say the least, and it was kind of a sign that my grandpa was there watching over me. But yeah, that's the end of that story. <laughs> Moving on. I have a story that I didn't personally experience but my mom experienced it. So my mom has these friends and they've been family friends of ours for years and my mom was going through a breakup and I think I was living with my dad at the time, my parents aren't together, and she needed somewhere to stay. So our family friends offered my mom to let her sleep at their house because they had a spare bedroom. Basically to let you guys in on the whole sort of situation is our family friends have lived in this house for years. They lived there for years and years and years and never had any problems. It's an old house. If you don't know, we grew up in, or I grew up, not my mom, I grew up in a small town called Paris, Ontario, and there's sort of like this vibe about Paris. It's so old. It came into existence in like the 1800s and so there's some like really old historical houses in Paris and our family friends lived in one of these really old houses it's sort of like on the street where there's like this whole sort of area of just really old houses there's like not really any new houses it's all just really really old century houses so they lived there for years and they didn't have any problems and my mom went to sleep in their guest bedroom as she was staying there for some time while she was going through a breakup well my mom kept waking up in the middle of the night and her bed was shaking like not like shaking like a vicious shaking it was just sort of like rocking back and forth and my mom was like really freaked out because it, how else would you feel if you woke up in the middle of the night and your bed was just kind of like rocking so she just kind of went back to sleep she didn't really do anything about it and then on the second night it was rocking again she woke up in the middle of the night and the bed was rocking again so she's like okay this is really really weird so she went back to bed whatever she woke up the next morning and she told like our family friends have you ever slept in that bedroom and they're like no why and she's like well I keep waking up and the bed is rocking they didn't believe her they were like okay like you're crazy you're losing your mind the bed is not rocking in the middle of the night so my mom's like sleep in there tonight like you'll see like the bed rocks back and forth in the middle of the night so our friend Sally slept in the bedroom the spare bedroom that night and she woke up in the middle of the night and it was rocking back and forth and she got really really freaked out she like woke everybody up and she was freaking out and her husband Kevin was like you guys are crazy like there's no way that the bed's rocking you guys are making this up you know like just he's not loud noises he's not a believer in the paranormal type thing finally on the like fourth night or whatever Kevin was like okay I'm gonna sleep in the spare bedroom to prove to you guys that it's not real and sure enough, Kevin woke up in the middle of the night and the bed was rocking. So my mom was like, okay, well, whatever. Like, I have to sleep in there. I have nowhere else to stay. Like, I need to sleep in this bed. She woke up in the middle of the night. The bed was rocking. And she said, look, I appreciate that you're here with me and doing whatever it is you need to do. But I don't need to be rocked to sleep at night. Please stop rocking the bed. And after that, the bed stopped rocking. Yeah. That's all the stories I'm going to tell to you guys today. Um, this wasn't really anything like personal to me, but one of the stories out of like three were mine and I have lots more where that came from anyway. This video is just kind of getting a little bit long, so maybe I'll do another installment of this paranormal type video. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, hit subscribe and be my friend. Don't forget, I put all my social media links down in the description box below for you guys to check out. And until next Sunday, keep shining. Bye guys. Now I have purple on my hands.